share my um, screen with you guys. Hi, everybody. Thanks for um, for joining today and yeah, taking the time to find out about all these great tech companies in the in the industry. It's really nice to to obviously tell you more about Profit Room, but obviously to learn about some of our um, colleagues as well throughout the um, throughout the industry. So um, a bit about Profit Room then. So um, I'm business development manager in the UK, but also take care of some of the other markets as well that it sounds like you guys are in today. And um, my background as well as a couple of the other people that have spoken today is in revenue management. So I actually used to be a client of Profit Rooms before joining the team. So it's been really nice to see sort of both sides of that relationship as well. So um, what do we actually do at Profit Room? So um, we are an online booking platform. So we sort of satisfy the entire guest journey, all of the guest facing tech. So that goes from our core product, which is the booking engine itself that sits on your hotel's website. We've then got the channel manager, so that's um, satisfying that integration between your PMS to all of your online channels as well, such as booking.com, Expedia, Airbnb, for example. We also build websites, so we do web design and web developments, and we have a great tool that I'll show you a little bit more of shortly, um, which is actually powered by all of the content um, that is making your booking engine as well. So it makes it really quick and easy for you to put together a website, um, which a lot of people have been doing um, throughout COVID, actually reviewing the sides of their um, tech stack as well. Um, finally, we've got the marketing services and automation. So marketing automation are like your CRM features. So pre and post day messaging to guests, building campaigns and newsletters, and then the marketing services, which is what I'm actually going to talk in more detail about first, which covers um, you know, SEO, Google hotel ads and other meta search as well. So then digital marketing, just to put a bit of like structure to um, the many products that we do have, I thought we could start by going through the, the user journey that a guest would actually experience online. And that would start with them actually finding your property. So how are you going to be as visible as possible? How are you going to get as many people finding you on a search engine to then enter your website and ultimately, hopefully make that reservation? And that all does start with digital marketing. So um, I've put on here to avoid blank blanket campaigns wherever possible, unless it's for brand protection. So we really want to personalize your marketing at every touch point to make it as targeted as possible and give you the highest chances of converting that guest rather than doing the, these blanket campaigns. When it comes to meta search, it is one of the fastest growing um, spaces at the moment. So in 2020, for example, over 45 percent of global travel searches online were on meta sites. Um, we know that it's been growing for a while and we imagine it will only carry on going in that direction. So if it's a space that you're not already aware of on in, then definitely something to to start looking into for your hotel, resort or you know, service departments, wherever it is that you're representing today. To give you um, a couple of examples of some meta sites, just so you can um, get a feel for what we're actually talking about. Um, so to start with, one of those most popular, especially here in Europe, is Google hotel ads. So when you're searching on Google and you pop in either a, um, a city or a particular hotel name, you'll find that on the right hand side, you've got your what we call like a Google business card. And this, to start with, you need to make sure that you've claimed it for your business. So quite often you'll see that space there, but it's not actually populated completely. So it's not linking to your website. You know, you can link to directions here to call the property as well. So make sure that that is actually showing for your, your hotel to begin with. But now um, Google has sort of taken over that space to actually facilitate reservations as well. So you can see this big blue check availability button. It might say book a room instead, something along those lines. And underneath, you'll see that you've got the different channels that you can then book on. And at the top, circled in the yellow here, it says official website. So that's your hotel's direct website. It's going to take you to your own booking engine, um, which is really where we want to be pushing as much traffic as possible. So Meta is great because it allows you to really have a more of a level playing field with OTAs. Um, the likes of Booking.com, Expedia have massive budgets to bid on your brand, but this really allows you to um, you know, be up there with those higher players. So really you want to be as high as you can on there rather than having to, to scroll through. Um, generally, we're very impatient as humans now, so um, we're not going to be scrolling to pages two or three when it comes to Meta.
Um, a few other examples, so there's Travago, one of the most popular meta sites as well, and the equivalent to that top space is this green box here, so that's the sort of headline slot that you want to be in. This is also a really good example of why rate parity is so important um, on meta sites as well. So you can see here the direct websites, £68, booking.com, 105 So with rate parity, you want to make sure that your direct website is either the same price or, or lower in this instance than who you're competing against as well. Um, one final example is TripAdvisor. So again, just to show you the difference of where these um, headline slots are over on the left here, you've got the official site. You can have it so your own logo and branding comes up on there too. And um, there are a few more depending on the market that you're really targeting at the moment. So with search engines, um, there is Bing, obviously a lot larger in the States than here in the UK. So one to be aware of for when that travel does open, you're seeing that demand coming from the States again. There's Yandex in Russia and another um, site getting a lot bigger in the Asian markets is WeGo, one of the uh, meta sites. So worth having a look at if they are target markets for you as well. So let's say you've got your meta all up to date. Um, where is that then taking them? That's going to be taking them to your website. So we want to make sure that your website is as highly performing as it can be, that when we're capturing all of these this traffic to the website, that they're then finding what they need. So you can see on the, the graphic here um, that our websites are completely compatible to all devices, which is so important nowadays. So I've put there as one of my points, compatible to mobile. If you have a website that is built from, let's say, the mobile up, as we call it, that means it can adapt to all the different smart devices that you're using, so tablets, mobiles, and um, other laptops as well. It was about three or four years ago, I think, when mobile bookings actually overtook desktop bookings in the travel industry. Um, so now I'm sure it's even, even higher than that. And especially during COVID and coming out of the pandemic, um, it's going to be a much younger demographic that have that confidence in traveling again first. And they are the ones that also are going to be more likely to be looking on a mobile. So one really key difference with our tech at Profit Room is that um, rather than um, just having your mobile compatible for your, your website itself, it will through into the into the booking engine. So it's a completely seamless integration between the two, which is why the products work so well together. I'd really encourage you all to go away today and actually have a look at your entire user experience from your website into your booking engine online. So making sure that it's as dynamic as possible, that you know what the goal is for each of the pages on your website too. So is it to give information to the guest? Is it for them to complete an inquiry form? Or is it for them to enter the booking engine and ultimately make that reservation? So have a look through and just get a feel for how that works for, for your property. Um, with Profit Room, we have um, a few different options when it comes to our web design as well. So we have a web assistant tool, which is um, a tool which creates your website in even just a couple of minutes from all of the content that is powering the booking engine itself. So just to show you a few examples, we've got five different templates that you can choose from. Um, you can mix them up. If you start you know, six months with the number three, the sun template, you can then move over to another if you don't feel that it's performing well in your space. But we can do very bespoke projects too. So we can actually sit down with your team, get an idea of your vision, what it is that you'd want to, to present online, um, find more out about your, your voice and your branding, and then put together a proposal there for you. Going then on into the booking engine itself, which I've mentioned a few times, um, this really is our core product at Profit Room. So this is where a lot of our investment and development and focus goes. Um, over a third of the team um, are web developers. We're constantly bringing out new developments and features to make sure that the booking engine is as highly performing as it can be um, and as personalized as it can be as well. So we primarily work with a lot of independent luxury hotels and resorts, but also a lot of really unique accommodation providers. So little cabins, lodges, eco pods as well. So we need to make sure that our tech can be personalized to each of those. 
even really little things like rather than saying room it can say cabin or villa or suite instead uh, which seems like something really simple but a lot of um, booking engines aren't able to do that so what's going to make your booking engine as engaging and highly performing as possible so Imagery is so, so important. Making sure that your property has really evocative imagery that's going to sell the experience um, is really key at the moment, but also making sure that that imagery is really prominent in the booking engine. So really the guest is getting all of your, um, you know, your blurb, your sales description, your um, you know, bringing the property to life within the website itself. But when they're in the booking engine, that's when they're at the sort of decision making process. So this is when we want the images to really sell that experience. And then looking at the customer um, journey as well. So how easy is it for them to get to that final step? How many steps are there within the booking process? And is it really clear what they need to do next to then carry on that journey as well? We also have some really great tools to, um, you know, not only get you more direct bookings, that's the goal at the end of the day to lower your overall commission costs, but how can we get you better quality bookings with a higher average booking value with package sales, a longer length of stay as well and with um, extras too. So I thought I'd show you just a couple of screenshots of what our booking journey looks like. Um, so you can maybe sort of picture that where it would sit with your property. So this is um, a hotel that we work with. I'm here in the UK where I'm based. And when you're on the hotel's website, if you went to book a room, which is just in sort of the top corner here, our booking engine opens as an iframe on top of the website like this, which is really one of the key USPs at Profit Room. So your URL isn't changing, your guest isn't being redirected to another site. So it's really going to support your brand, protect your brand but also gives you a really seamless user journey for the guest as well. This um, landing page that we first come on to, this is great for showcasing different offers and packages that you have at the property. And these little filters at the top that you can see, they can be changed as well based on, on your demographic, your market that you're targeting, um, or what you know your best services are that you can offer. So if I were to click on one of these offers, they all have their own dedicated landing pages that look a bit like this. Um, we can make these for all of your room types as well. And these are great because um, although everything's opening as this iframe that's coming up on top of the website, it's all still being powered by URLs in the background. So that means that we can link to these pages from other areas. So you could put um, embed links for these to social media, onto your website itself, or putting them into campaigns and newsletters as well. So guests then are going to be taken immediately into your booking engine, rather than having that extra stage on the website and then having to click through. So your clicks through from your point of interest to your confirmation of a booking will be a lot shorter. We can also make really bespoke landing pages for different events or um, weddings, corporate accounts that you might have too. And we can even change the imagery as well. So you could have a photo of the, the couple here for a wedding, or you could have the, the logo and branding for a corporate account. These as well will really help support not only to get you more direct bookings, but to get you more bookings that are online. So conversations that we have a lot with hoteliers are, OK, well, obviously I want more direct bookings, but so many of those direct bookings are happening over the phone or email and it's taking a lot longer. Um, it, one of the big conversations that's happening at the moment at all the events that, that we're attending is around the staffing shortage. So your teams aren't as big, people are, you know, helping out wherever they can. And reducing the number of phone calls and emails that the team are getting is going to take a lot of pressure off of you. So typically, why are people calling? It's because they maybe can't find what they're looking for online. You've got a quite a unique package that's hard to promote and sell online. Um, maybe length of stay restrictions, for example. So we eliminate all of that with our tech so that it's um, as easy as possible for the guests to find all of that and not feel like they have to pick the phone up. So if I went through from this landing page to then click on show the price list, we're then taken through to the actual rates and availability. So here you can see at the top, it's taken me to Sunday the 28th of November for a two night stay. Now that's because that's the next date that this package that I've clicked on has availability for. 
So all of our entries into the booking engine are pre-populated or personalized so that you're very rarely going to be shown a no availability message, which um, is happening quite a lot at the moment and is can be very frustrating as well. So um, you'll see here if I opened up the calendar and let's say I didn't want to stay on those dates, I then selected a new date. The minimum length of stay restriction is pulling through as well. So it's telling me that I need to stay for two nights. And this is really key because quite a lot of people, especially given the increased demand in some of the regional areas um, during COVID, will have these minimum length of stay restrictions. But people are maybe searching for not quite the right arrival nights or not quite the right length of stay. And they're simply getting a no availability, um, you know, try your luck again, see what dates you can find. Whereas we're always guiding the guests to that next date that they can find. So the next step after that um, is then your um, extra stage. So it is worth pointing out that our booking funnel does only have three steps. So it's a really short booking process. And even just showing those steps at the top, um, again, it sounds like something quite small, but we need a lot of handholding um, online. And um, it's great to um, show those different steps to the guest as well. The extra stage two, perfect for um, increasing any ancillary revenue that you can get throughout other departments. And our extra stage, we can also break down into tabs, which we really like. So you could actually see there um, your in-room extras, dining extras, cancellation as well. Again, these are completely com customizable to your property, um, but it just means that the guest isn't having to scroll through a big long list of extras, um, especially talking about mobile again. We don't really want more than one or two scrolls on there. Um, so that that's going to really help um, you know, enhance your user experience. On the right hand side here, we've got the reservation summary. So this sits throughout the booking process um, and you can see as well, it's really clear the payment breakdown. So this is only more important at the moment. People want to know what's expected to be paid now and later. We've built COVID specific policies as well that you can put on your booking engine too. We do integrate with um, a majority of payment gateways, so we can then actually set up for automated payments to be taken at the time of booking, but to then also trigger reminder emails to send out to guests as well. So just one less thing for your team to have to do um, and free them up for other tasks as well. So that goes through sort of a whirlwind of the, um, the booking engine journey online. Um, Everything is powered from what we call our profit room suite. And within that hub, we have a few other features as well that can help you really reconnect with your guests, other touch points too. So we've gone through, I suppose, the whole point of booking. Um, after that, we still need to have that communication in place. So we have automated pre and post day messaging all set up from our system, which um, is included within the booking engine itself. And this goes through to even a message that goes almost a year after the guest last made a reservation rather than stayed to say, you know, this time last year, you were planning your trip to, um, you know, to Italy, to South of France that we've spoken about before. Um, you can leave an incentive in there for them to rebook or just to remind them that you're still there and want to welcome them again. The system can also create um, campaigns and newsletters, which is again all built from the content that you've already put in the system. So it makes it really easy for you to manage. And um, they're all done with drag and drop elements. So you can just pull through um, and create a really nice looking campaign very quickly as well, um, where all of your um, images, descriptions and pricing all pull through um, and a nice little call to action for them to then go through to that specific landing page within the booking engine as well. We have one feature which I'm really excited to tell you guys about um, because it is really unique to our system too, which is personalised offers. So um, we have a um, little module in our suite which allows your team to be able to send out a quote or a proposal to a guest um, if they're not quite ready to commit to booking yet. So um, I remember from working in a hotel, we'd so often get phone calls from people who would say, you know, would get their quote and then they'd say, I need to speak to my partner or I'll call you back. I'm not quite ready to book yet. So what this allows you to do is your team can come into here. They would then select the particular offers or packages that they have spoken to a guest about on the phone or maybe on email. And then we can create a, a body here. They say we can create different templates, but it's a completely free type field. So you know if they were celebrating something or you wanted to be a bit more personalized, you can add that in. 
And then this allows you to do quite a few things. So to start with, it will send the offer, offer sent here. So that's going to send them a really nice looking email with the body that you have written and then the different offers that you have selected. You can choose different nights of the week. You can choose different room types, different packages. You can do multi rooms as well. So there's a lot that you can do with that. The guest then all they need to do is click through on the offer that they would like to book and it takes them straight to the checkout stage on the website to complete the booking. So going back to what I was talking about earlier, this really helps you to reduce the number of phone calls that you're getting and increase the conversion too. So if you have that um, conversation on the phone, they're probably going to want something in an email anyway. So if you're putting it through our platform, they're then encouraged to complete the booking online rather than call back again. If they don't click through and make that reservation, then we can trigger follow up emails to be sent from there. So there are two different options for that. So day after, two days after, whatever you see fit and appropriate for your hotel, you can then send them a little reminder to then make that booking. We can also then um, get different reporting from it as well. So this is really mimicking what you would have online with your Google Analytics. You can then retarget that guest with the follow ups and, you know, manage your, your conversion rates from there. So um, going then on to some other areas of the suite is the reporting. So um, with my revenue manager hat on, this is an area that I really love of the Profit Room suite. So this is one of our reports, which is a demand analysis report. So this allows you to see not only um, when people are searching for dates, but for what dates they're then searching for. So given the past 18 months, almost two years, traditional reporting that revenue managers, general managers are looking at on sites have really lost their weight. So comparing to previous years and your market um, isn't quite as unreliable as it used to be. Whereas this demand analysis report allows you to see current data and current demand. So what people are looking at today. So this was really helpful um, around event days as well to see when those spikes are of interest. And you can then really build your, your whole sales and marketing strategy and revenue strategy around that. So here, um, if you were hovering over on the live account, it would tell you the dates and the actual number of people searching. But I can see this big spike here for what the 3rd, 4th of May, I imagine that would be. And so why is that? Is something happening in the area? Do I need to review my pricing? Do I need to pop a length of stay restriction on to support my shoulder nights as well? How can I really enhance on that demand? Um, another report as well is showing you when people are searching for dates and then getting no availability messages. So again, we can see here similar time to the demand um, analysis report, a really big spike at that beginning of May for people searching and then finding that you are full. So maybe, you know, this could be a good thing, just that there's a great demand in the, in the market and that you're already taking advantage of that. But also maybe I do need to look at my restrictions. Um, if lots of people are searching for a Sunday night, for example, I want to make sure that I open up availability if I'm working on allotments, for example. So um, I thought it would be useful as well to show you just how we fit into the tech stack, just conscious of time, but I am near the end. Um, so this will vary slightly based on hotel to hotel, but just to give you an idea of how it all fits together. So you've got your internal PMS system here on site, which often um, links to a revenue management system um, or a payment gateway as well. We then have a two-way integration with that particular PMS. And then from there, that's where all of our tools are then built from. So you've got the channel manager going out to your OTAs, but also your online booking engine. And then also your, your digital marketing CRM that we just looked at and the website as well, which is all powered from that one profit room suite. Um, with all of our services, we do have um, obviously access to our full support team. Our, um, the company started off over in Poland, which is where our head office now in Poznan, which is where all of our developers are. The majority of the team, like myself, do have a background in hospitality. So not only do we um, want to be a part of your overarching strategies and goals, but we really do understand those day-to-day -day operational difficulties and challenges that you are facing. So it's been really nice to have those sort of like-minded conversations with hoteliers again. You will also get a dedicated account manager when you work with Profit Room. So they are specifically selected based on your style of property and the expertise that they have. And they can really act as like an extension of your team. And um, so you're really making the most out of the platform. 
So just a few um, like takeaways for you to have from today. So please do get in touch with me um, on LinkedIn or through the platform here if you have any other questions or would like to see more of the platform as well. But a few things that you can do now is to have a look at your user journey online, go through as a guest would and really get a feel for what the user experience is like, because that is the first impression that they're having of your property. Um, I've put here as well to be guest centric in your approach. So, you know, put your put yourself in the, the mind of the guest, maybe get some friends or family of yours that don't work in the industry to go on because it is very different from their point of view. Um, I've also put here as well, expect more from your tech partners. So I quite often and my colleagues quite often have conversations with hoteliers where they're building their strategy around the tech that they already have and they maybe feel a bit limited by that. We really, really encourage you to find partners that can grow with you and that can realize your goals rather than building your strategies around the tech that you already have in place. So that's it from me. Thank you so, so much for listening. Um, if you do have any questions to, as I said, pop something in the chat, touch with me on LinkedIn as well. And we'd love to find out about your property and how we might be able to help you like we have some of our other clients. So thank you, Rachel, for, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I put on a screen uh, the virtual stand of Profit Room. So, uh, the attendees can schedule a meeting with, with your team. Uh, and I hope to see you again next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>